How to Use Mega Linter with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux based agent. Now you might be asking yourself, what is Mega Linter? Well, if we go out to the site megalinter.io, it tells us that Mega Linter is an open source tool for CI/CD workflows that analyze the consistency of code, IAC, configuration, and scripts in repository sources. Now, if we dig in further into the documentation, we'll see an example of using Megalinter with Jenkins. What we see here is we have a stage, we're using an agent, using Docker, we're pulling in the Megalinter image, setting up some arguments for the image, and then what we actually do is we short circuit the example with the entry point, setting it to empty, and that way we can run the entry point by hand. They go on to show an example of archiving the artifacts for everything that comes out of Megalinter, which is the Megalinter log, and everything inside of the Megalinter reports directory. Now I've got a sample repository set up. The link to that repository is down in the description. If we take a look at the repository, what I have is an example directory using the Rife2 framework, and then I have a Jenkins file. What you'll notice within the Jenkins file is that I have agent none, and I've set up the stage to look exactly like what we saw over in the example provided from Megalinter. So I have an agent none, and then within the stage, I'm specifying the container image, Megalinter v7, passing in all the arguments. Notice how I'm setting the entry point to empty, and then within the step, I just run the entry point .sh. Now I've included the archive artifacts here for completeness, but in this video, we're not gonna be taking a look at any of the output from that outside of when the job actually runs. So I've gone ahead and set up the job, Megalinter. If we were to take a look at the configuration for this job, we can see that it's pointing at that repository and that Jenkins file. So let's go ahead and click on build now and see what happens. Now that the job's completed, we can see that the job failed. So let's go ahead and go back up to the top and work our way through the log. When we take a look at the output, we pull in the image that we can see here, Megalinter v7. It does a few extra steps here, then we get into the entry point, and then we start analyzing the project. So what we'll see here is a number of activations, meaning that a certain part of Megalinter has been turned on or being turned off. Now in this case, everything's activated, so what we can see here is Megalinter now collects the files to analyze. It's looking at file extensions of all of these file extensions, also file names. Notice that it's also looking at Jenkins file for us. And then it goes through and ignores certain getignore files. And then what we see here is the matching linters that will be used for this scan. Let me go ahead and bump this down one so we get a full list of what we're seeing in this output. So we can see here's the full list but it's not gonna be formatting or fixing anything. We're just saying, just scan it. We're taking the exact example that was given to us by Megalinter and running it, and then we'll make some changes to it as we go through. So we can see all the scans that happen. We can see that this scan for spell failed with the red X. If we go ahead and scroll down some more, we'll see some more check marks. We can see that a spell failed again. If we keep going through, we'll see either check marks or red Xs. So if we go all the way to the bottom and take a look at the summary, what we're going to see from this summary is that a number of these red X's, CSS, HTML, Java, and spell all failed. All the others, the green checkboxes, all passed. Now the way we can tell that is if we take a look at the error column, we'll see what errors happened for each of these different checks. Now we're using just the base image for Megalinter, Megalinter colon v7. But notice what happens right below this summary. You could have had the same capabilities, but better runtime performance if you use a Mega Linter flavor. In this case, it's recommending that we use the Cupcake flavor. So if we're to go ahead and click into this link, what we're going to see for Cupcake is it gives us a container image reference that we can use. So let's go ahead and copy this. So let's go ahead and make the change to the container image reference to use Cupcake. So we'll go ahead and edit this file. Let's go ahead and modify this reference. Now we're gonna be referencing the Cupcake version. If you were to take a look under the hood at the container images that are on the agent, right now the Megalinter V7 image is right around 10 gig. However, the Cupcake image is just over four gig. So let's go ahead and save this change. Click Commit Changes. The only change that we've made is changing the V7 base image to use the Cupcake image. Let's go ahead and click on Commit Changes. 
Now that we've saved those changes, let's go back over to our job and let's run the job one more time. Now that the job finished again, we can see that we're not getting that same cupcake error that we saw in the first run because now we're using the cupcake image. But we do see something else here. We can see here errors have been found during linting. To disable linters or customize their checks, you can use a .megalinter YAML file at the root of the repository. Now, let's take a look at that documentation for using that because if we were to take a look at the output, we could decide, you know what? I really don't care about the spelling and I want to be able to disable the spell linting for this repository. So if we were to take a look at the configuration, we could create a megalinter YAML file at the root of the repository. Now, that's probably the best way to do these things. That way you can keep track of all the things that you're changing for megalinting. But I'm going to go at it a little bit differently. Notice that we can also use environment variables. So since we can set environment variables within our Jenkins file, let's do that. Now, if we were to take a look at the documentation for how to do that, if we take a look at activation and deactivation, what we can set is disable. And if disable is set, the linters in that list will be skipped. So what I want to be able to do is I want to disable spell. If we were to take a look at the console output again, I want to disable these two items. So let's go ahead and go back over to our repository. Let's modify this file. We're gonna add in an environment variable. We're gonna type disable and we're gonna say equals spell. And let's close that up. So the only ones that we're wanting to disable, looking back at our console output, we want to disable spell. We still want HTML to fail, we want Java to fail, we want CSS to fail, but we want to get rid of spell. We're okay with bad spelling. So let's go ahead and go back over to our repository, click on commit changes, and then let's go ahead and go back over to our job and run the job again. Now that the job completed, Notice here at the bottom, the spells that were failing before are now gone. But also notice that the job is still failing because we do have failing items within our scans. Let's assume for a moment that we were a little too aggressive and put Megalinter in, but we really don't want it to fail the jobs right now. We want to be able to just run Megalinter. If there's failures, great. If there's no failures, great. We just want the job to continue on to success or at least move on to the next stage. At this point, if we had more stages after this stage, the pipeline would fail. But what I want to be able to do is let this stage, whether there's errors or not, to continue on. The way that we can do that is by disabling the errors. Let's go back over to our documentation. If we were to take a look at common variables, what we can see here is there is a disables environment variable that we can add and we can set it to true. By default, it's false. So by setting it to true, we'll tell it to exit with code zero even if errors are detected. So let's go ahead and go back into our Jenkins file. We'll edit it and let's modify our environment block to include disable underscore errors equals true. Let's go ahead and click on commit changes and then let's go ahead and go back over to our job and run it one last time. Now, if we take a look at the output of this final table, what we can see is instead of red X's, we're getting exclamation points in a yellow triangle and notice that it says successfully linted all files, but with ignored errors. So by specifying disable underscore errors equals to true, we change it from a red X to a yellow exclamation point. And also notice that our job finished successfully. If we were to go back to the job and take a look at it, we can see here that the first three failed and then this fourth run that we just finished actually succeeded. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.